welcome back to Skidmore Family Farm. Like I promised, I told you I would show you the painting after the drywall was done. And as you can see, the drywall has been prime, sanded, primed, and I've started cutting in the rest of the room. But I'm going to show you the demonstration just on this wall here. This is the wall that we did the drywall mudding on when we did the seam down the middle and that was just a week or so ago but we've got the drywall done throughout the um, areas that we're doing drywall work and i've got this room and this room over here primed and this room over here has one coat of paint i'll go ahead and show you that but this is this is what we're working towards right now i'm going to show you how to cut and roll and the end result will look like this and I just installed that door yesterday still got some touch-ups to do on it and then it'll be ready to sand and paint the door and door frame we salvaged uh, doors from another um, medical unit I think or metal, medical building but this is the goal right here to get everything brushed which is in painting terms is cutting you cut in with your brush and then roll I see people roll and then brush and it doesn't turn out as good you get more brush lines like up along the ceiling um, and around your doors and that type of thing if you brush last you have all your brush streaks um, even with a really good brush but we'll get you back over here. And as you can see, like I said, I've already uh, cut all this in just a few minutes ago. And there's no baseboard, so it will only be the uprights and like the corners and along the ceilings. Uh, the door still has to be trimmed out. I don't have the materials for that yet. So there won't be any real brushing around that. We'll just roll up to it. And then I'll patch and paint and all that stuff whatever I have to do to make that door work. Like I said, those are old, um, already used doors, but they were in halfway decent shape, so we're gonna use those. They already had those, we picked those up at the warehouse yesterday. But let's get started. We're gonna start cutting in with the brush. One of the keys to brushing in and cutting a straight line without tape is cut, hold your brush parallel to the ceiling, not like this. Don't brush uh, with the brush pointing up and down vertical. You fan it out when you push the brush down and that'll make a straight line and then you move the brush. Uh, also another tip when you're brushing or rolling, Never start directly in the corner. Come in six inches or whatever. If you don't, if your brush has got too much paint on it, it'll drip uh, or it'll push up on the ceiling if you're brushing. If you're rolling, you'll get uh, a run, uh, or they'll call them ropes. It kind of looks like a braided line and it'll get too close to the corner and then you have to come back with your brush and then you have to roll back up to it again. So it's best to start a couple inches in and then roll out and then back roll into the corner or window, door frame, anything that you have to start up against an edge, never start on the edge itself, start in the sun. So let's get started. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See, I'm starting down a little bit and I push up into the corner, work away from the corner. And see what I said about fanning out? I'm holding the brush pretty much parallel. That fans it out, gives a nice point to the tip and gives you a good straight line without having to use tape. And I usually like to make two passes. Most people would say this is good enough right here. It could be rolled after that, but 
I like to come down a little lower. Um, that way there's a good overlap. I usually like about four to five inches uh, below the ceiling to allow for the rolling to overlap. Then you don't have holidays. Holidays and missed spots are um, any painter, professional painter, if you say holiday, you'll know what you're talking about are skippers. Most people say holidays, but some people call them skippers, and that's where you skip over and don't come back and you get a missed spot. If you can see through the paint, like right here, there's a void in the drywall, so at the first pass, they didn't get it. So I'll go up, push up into it, fan it out, and then come back down. Like I said, I like that about that much. That's about four to five inches or two. This is a two and a half inch brush. Um, you come down about two brush widths, and that'll give you that four inches, five inches or so. And you don't want to chop when you paint. You want even strokes. If you need more paint, put more paint on, but don't try to spread the paint that's, um, you don't want to short yourself on the paint. Always use, it's always better to have more paint on your brush than not enough, because it wastes time and uh, leaves uh, holidays. So nice even strokes. That also allows, uh, for smooth, even finish, and you don't have thick uh, lines that'll dry or raise, that'll have a rough texture. You want it to be as smooth as possible so the roller texture covers that and you have a nice uh, clean finish. Like I said, don't start directly in the corner. I have a little bit of space. Then we come up, go back into the corner. And you'll be able to see this better. I'll do some more videos when we get our GoPro and the drone and all that. I plan on buying some professional grid like camera equipment. Um, but right now we're just stuck with this. We've got a lot of other things we need to get straightened out on the homestead before we start spending that kind of money. And you go in your corner. Same thing on your uprights. I like to come about two brush widths over. So four to five inches again. For approximately, it doesn't have, you don't have to measure it out. But. keys, like I said, is to always overlap. Don't stop short of your, your last cut. Always overlap over it. That will prevent holidays and uh, evens out the paint also. Some people do this and some people don't. There's no outlets uh, or foam plates jacks on this right now. But I like to go around these and then that way I don't have to get as close with the roller and you don't pick up drywall dust in the roller and then leave little paint boogers everywhere. So I go up to it like that. And then when I roll, I'll pretty much roll tight to it, but I don't have to press down so hard on the roller to get up close. Just trying to get some texture on it with the roller when you come back through with that.
And then we'll go back to the ceiling and finish that. We'll go to that corner and then I'll break out the roller and show you that. And this is something that I usually do too on the first coat. Um, I had some drips with the primer and then instead of waiting and then getting the paint on it, I'll go ahead and pop the little drips off now and hit it with some paint and then we can do some spackling or drywall mud touch up for the little chips left. more of like a splatter from when I rolled up uh, or down too fast. It probably came off the edge of the roller and then I didn't catch it and then it hardened. And this is an appro uh, OSHA approved ladder just in case you're wondering. I just like the bucket because I can slide it with my feet. I don't have to pick it up. I can keep moving and it doesn't slow me down as much as messing with the ladder and having to reposition it if you don't have it close enough or whatever. It allows me to just keep moving and keep a nice steady pace without creating more work. It's just a waste of time for me, but in a commercial setting, a uh, new job site, we'd have probably have to have hard hats on, steel toe boots, um, uh, OSHA approved ladders, basically fiberglass step ladders. But hopefully this gives you an idea We'll get into more detail, like I said, once I get uh, the GoPro set. When I'll, I'll have like the headset thing where I can put a camera and you can see up close what I'm doing. And then that way we'll go into more detail of painting and drywall when I don't when I got a hands-free uh, like headset with the camera and all that. And that will allow me to go into detail on. Um, fine detail of how you're holding the brush. You can see up close what I'm actually doing. Right now I'm just trying to give you the basics. So something that I just noticed, I don't know if you can see this, you probably can't see, but up there in the corner where I stopped at, there's pinholes in the drywall mud, uh, and it's just like where air bubbles popped, and it creates a void. I like to fill those in with paint, and then when I roll over it, it gives it the texture that it kind of drips out and fills the void, and then that way you don't see little pinholes in the wall. Most of the time I can get away with just doing that instead of breaking out the drywall mud or patching in. And some people also, they like to rake that. I, I dip and then smack the paintbrush against the sides, not very hard, just kind of tap it like that. 
that pushes the paint into the brush. If you're just dipping it in there, you're getting all the paint on the outside and then you're scraping it off so your brush stays dry. It makes it a lot harder to get a nice straight line with a dry brush. show you I you can go right to left I like to work left to right personally it's just something that I've always gotten in the habit of doing so that's how I do it and we're using an 18 inch roller uh, we have a telescopic pole basically you push the button down here that extends this is uh, I think a 5 to 10 which means it's uh, five feet, or no, this one's a four to eight. Uh, four feet tall, it'll extend up to like eight feet, uh, which allows me to get about 18 feet in the air. So if I have to fully extend it out for the tall ceilings or whatever I'm trying to paint, I like to extend it out to about five to six feet. That keeps me away from the wall. That keeps paint off of me. It'll splatter on the floor. Um, something I also do, this is just concrete. The floor is going to be scraped and uh, they're going to put the vinyl down. But I like to leave the, some of the drywall dust on the floor. And then when you go to sweep up, the little speckles of paint get swept up instead of stuck to the floor. It's just something that I've always practiced. Um, when I'm not using a tarp, I don't typically use a tarp on the bare floors um, unless the job is really uh, a picky job or a high end. Uh, this to me, it's gotta be scraped, like I said, and they'll probably even grind it down in some places to get the glue up. So we're not gonna worry about it too much. But if there was a finished floor, we would definitely use a tarp under the the rolling um, to prevent splatters on the floor. Like I 
like I said, start. Don't start here in the corner. Start over here. We'll get it going. Get a good, get a good path going. Then you work your way back into the corner or door frame, whatever you're trying to paint up against. You just never want to start, and then that prevent. I have a nice even edge right here, not a bunch of buildup and runs and drips. And if you see any dirt in the paint, like I just noticed right here, I pick it out as I go, and then you don't have to sand it later. Um, that way you have a nice, even, smooth finish, no dirt in it. It's easier to pick it out as you go than the way to sand it later. Also, if you have finished floors, it's always wise to start in the upward rolling position. Then that way it flips the paint. You start down low and it flips the paint towards the wall instead of if you go downwards, the paint splatters on your tarp and then you're stepping on your tarp and getting footprints everywhere. So always start uh, about a quarter of the way up the wall and start in an upward stroke. And you almost want the paint to be dripping off. Always keep your brushes and your rollers filled with paint. You don't want a dry roll or dry brush. You just waste time and you get a, a bad finish. So start quarter of the way up, go upwards, down. Then you can see how I brushed around those outlets and that allows me to not have to work slowly into it. It's easier to brush around it than to try and fight it with the roller. Plus, that's, when you brush around it, it keeps the dirt out of the roller. You don't have to get so close to it. Another piece of dirt. And that was probably off of that edge of that box, the outlet box. And you always back roll into what you already painted to get the, the roller streaks out. Or ropes, whatever you want to call them. And you back roll all the way to where you started from. Get that piece of dirt. And this is just the first coat, so we'll sand the walls again to ensure we get a really smooth finish. This is a half inch nap also. Um, I prefer at least a half inch, three eighths naps, quarter inch naps. It just gives you a smoother finish, but I like some texture to it. Some people don't. And don't. You don't want to be all over the place. Nice, vertical, straight up and down. And then as you get so far along, you want to come back and look over what you did to make sure there's no runners, uh, drips, anything like that, splatters, dirt in the paint. Always come back before it dries. Because at this point, I can still roll over it. Uh, I can pick something out or roll back over to get a drip. 
once it starts tacking up, it'll put a really like a stempled texture on it if it's in between, if it's too close to being dry. Let's move you around so you can see what's going on. And like I said, we'll get really detailed into it once I get uh, the hands-free uh, GoPro. And then you can really see, I can probably teach you how to paint um, with more detailed videos. I'm just trying to give you the gist of it right now. And notice how I stop at a certain point. Once you see that it's not covering anymore, you make a, you stop about there and then go up or down once or twice, and then you come back and roll into it, and that smooths it out. Usually, you want at least 50% overlap. So I started here. I want to go back over to here, and that allows to uh, prevent that ropes or lines. showing through and you gotta do a third coat or a touch up. Once once you're uh, completed it's nice to not have to go back and touch up because when you touch up a lot of times you can see where the patch was or the touch up was. Um, so I like to make sure that I try and figure everything out on the first coat to make sure that when I do the second coat that it's a done deal. There's no touch up after that unless some, somebody scrapes the wall up or something like that. But that's gonna pretty much wrap up our video for today. Painting 101, Skidmore Family Farm style. And yes, I have painted for a number of years, commercial, residential, um, industrial. I've painted everything from houses, courthouses, uh, Children's Museum in Indianapolis and water towers, water treatment plants, just about it. anything you can paint. Uh, I've painted it at some time or another. So you're probably not gonna have that good of luck right off the bat, but once you practice it, use the techniques that I'm telling you about and you'll get better and better to where you can do it on your own with no tape no uh, uh, guards or anything like that to make a straight line. But that wraps up another Skidmore Family Farm video. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the thumbs up to like our videos and hit the notification bell to get all our latest videos. 
Thanks. Have a great day.